Well, hello. We're back to uh, part two of unit three. And uh, first part of unit three, what we talked about is we talked about position, max material condition, least material condition, concentrated on position, why we need datums. The second part will be uh, a little bit on the qualification of the datum features and also the uh, profile. Profile, that's my favorite. Profile, you're going to like profile. Really, really neat symbol. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, at our part again. So what we have here is uh, we already talked about the position. And remember what we did is we put our datums on here. So we had A was the back face, B was the bottom edge, and C was the side edge over here. All these basic dimensions are required for your locating, uh, locating a, a feature of size like this for this position. All right, so uh, we talked about A. Now remember what datum A was. Datum A is going to be the perfect plane that contacts on the high points like that. Remember how many points was it touching on there? Uh, that contacts at least three points of uh, contact it can be, right? Yep, three points. So it would be three points on this back surface. Somewhere in here it's going to be three points where that perfect plane is. Well, you see that ugly looking datum feature though, that, you know, it's all wavy and bumpy like that. How bad can that be? Well, if you don't say anything, you really don't get anything. So on this one, what we did is we want to put a flatness on that. And we talked about flatness in the first unit quite a bit, but you want to put flatness on there to qualify the datum feature. So what that's doing is that's basically controlling the difference between our datum and our actual datum feature. So our datum feature has a flatness on there called qualifying that. So it'll tell you if it went down how much it wobble or how unstable it would be on that surface. That's mm -hmm. exactly correct. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we have uh, A down, let's take a look at uh, B. So the next one is B. And remember, B, it was touching how many points on B? Uh, well, the most it could touch would be uh, two. That's it, just two points, because you're resting three points on the back surface, so then all you'd get is you get two points, because it's actually not perfectly square to datum feature A. All right, so then we have to put something on B to relate it back to A. And so what we put there is we put a perpendicularity. So what they did is they made sure that B was perpendicular within some number relative to A. They picked 5,000, so that, what that is then, it's a zone, a total wide zone, two parallel planes, five thousandths apart, and that controls how much the surface could be tilted this way, how much it could be tilted this way. So that's the five thousandths perpendicularity zone. So if it has a perpendicularity of five on there, how flat is that surface then? Well, if the surface has to fall in that zone, then you get a flatness in there too, right? Exactly. Flatness. So perpendicularity mm -hmm. also controls the flatness on there, so you get a free flatness with that also. Could you just put the flatness on there, or would you have to have the perpendicularity? Well, you definitely need the perpendicularity because you see how the flatness, you see how flatness oh, yeah, would just yeah. be looking like this. It is a flat surface, right. but there's mm -hmm. no relationship to data A, so yeah, you okay, wouldn't need a perpendicularity mm -hmm. on there. All right, so now we've got uh, A and we got B, and so we, since we added in B, we have to relate that back to A. Now we have the next one, C. Now C, it was only touching, uh, I think, just one point on right. C there. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we wanted to make sure that C was perpendicular within some number relative to A and to B. So you see what it is, is every time you add in a new datum feature, you qualify it back to what you already have. So A, since it was the first one, you just make it flat. B, you have to relate that one to A. Now when you put in C, you have to relate it back to A and to B. So what you get then is you get a tolerance zone that looks like this that's controlling the tilt relative to B. And then also if you looked at it in 3D, it would be also relative to this plane back here too. So that's the perpendicularity relative to A and to B. So, so what, well, what that's really saying then is that if this is our assembly and the part fits in there, then really by qualifying those datum features, we know that it rocks around. We can't stop that, right? So what it does is it really tells us how much, how unstable it is inside that. Yeah, so if I could just come by here and I could stick my pen under there, like how much of a gap can you handle under there? And that's going to be your perpendicularity tolerance. Mm -hmm. And then the flatness was this down here, right? Mm -hmm. Flatness, and then this was our other perpendicularity. So what it does is it qualifies the, the feature to the datum reference frame. Yeah, you know your datum reference frame is perfect. Your datum features are not. So that's what your flatness is, your perpendicularities are doing on there. Mm -hmm. 